session. In today's session, we will discuss some of the salient features and uh, what are the problems that we face while writing a research grant or research proposal for getting some projects or research projects. Because in nowadays, many organizations, NGO, government bodies provide a lot of funds for research and innovation. So this is a field where if you get do a good job, then you will get good amount of the fund for doing your research and it will also enhance your employability. When you join some research organization or teaching profession, then you have to do some projects and you have to do some research work. So when you learn this critical skill, then it will enhance your ability to help others because under your guidance, there will be other people who will do work under you. If you get the research project, then you will be the team leader. You can be a principal investigator or co-investigator co in the team and you will have a good reputation for yourself and for your institution or your department. Uh, so research writing, research proposal writing is very important in our day-to-day -day life, in our teaching and research work. So now, if you have any question, the start we can ask, because this is the question and answer session, so we will proceed with the, if anyone have particular problem, facing particular problem, any you have doubt, any, any suggestion you want to share, you can start sharing. So first of all, you have to raise your hand and don't unmute everyone. Only those who wish to speak, they have to unmute. Others have to keep their mic unmuted. The hand up. Yes, you have fully shared. I think. Yes, thank, thank you so much for organizing this session and the entire training. Well, I observe that all the grants, when you visit their sites, there's always a statement like um, for early starters or middle middle career researchers and something like that. Meaning that from that, maybe there's already a limit on what you can apply for. For instance, in my country, I'm from Nigeria, I'm a pediatrician. I'm also a lecturer at the university. You know, you write articles before you get promoted and all that. Now I have been promoted to become a prof. Now, I feel that now that I have, um, I do not have to worry about writing articles for promotion and things. Maybe it's time for me to look for researches and other things like that to do. But when you get to the sites, you find statement like I have um, mentioned above. So how, what to be your counsel on how to go about subverting this? Because if it says early career, mid career, Already, if I if I put that I'm a professor or something, it's already put that bar that look this person is already within so 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 range. So, what would be your counsel for this? Thank you. Anyone wish to answer her queries? Yeah, please proceed, Timothy. You can answer if you wish. Yeah. Is anyone replying or should I proceed? I will. So when, I can. You, yeah, when you have gained a excellence, you know, job, like you, if you have already promoted to professor level, but when you think about your uh, department or your in educational institution, the ranking of the your institutions will depend on how much research publication you are doing, how much uh, research project your institution is doing. So it is not all about yourself uh, gain. It will also lead to gain helping others, like those who are working under you, 
your guidance or those who are your colleagues you can help them in getting research writing done you can help them in getting a research project awarded to your department or your institutions this will enhance your reputation and as well as your institutions so we should not stop while in the journey of the, our excellence don't think about ourselves only we have to think about overall institutions where we are working so that it can excel in its hope i am able to answer your query now can i uh... now let uh, Mr. Sharma, I would like to add something also. Yeah. Even I. <laughs> okay. Um, as far as we know, there are a lot of types of grants. It could be uh, institutional national grants, uh, regional grants, and uh, international grants, or nonprofit grants. Uh, and there are a lot of types of grants. At the same time, there are different grants which target the specific uh, audience. It could be for only early career researchers, it could be for professionals, for example. So uh, some of the institutional grants that target the institutions like university as you as like a staff member, most of it like it target early career researchers, specifically, for example, master uh, or the staff that lecturer or master or even let's say um, the maximum it could be like post postdoc. At this point, as Sharma mentioned, it, you can help like uh, teaching assistant or other people too. But at the same time, that doesn't mean there are not other funds like opportunities that could target, for example, for professionals. So seeking it will be a target here, seeking the appropriate type of funding which match your skills, which match your uh, profession, so you will try to find another way. You might ask, for example, different colleagues from different universities or uh, a lot of already, uh, what can I say? A lot of grants that has Everybody been already mentioned. With others. Yeah, <laughs> you can also uh, check it. I hope like I answer your question. Yeah. Thank you for adding this valuable input. Oh, yeah, now... I, if... If I may come in quickly or briefly, good afternoon, everyone from Nigeria. Like what the prof said, can you hear me? Yes, sir. yes, we can hear you. Like, like most of TED fund based grants, you must have a PI, and that PI must be a professor. So I believe she may look through TED fund grants, and there are so many of them. You have money ranging from 5 million to 100 million TED fund based in Nigeria. So she can look for that and she can be a PI for any team. And those from sciences used to have more grants than those in other, other fields. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for adding. Now, Rejoice Overa can ask her question. She has raised her hand. Oh yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Actually, I wanted to make a contribution to the professor's question. So I just wanted to add that she can um, actually look for, you know, instead of applying by herself, she can actually collaborate with others, especially young researchers that are within her network. Yes. Thank you. You can check from, I think from chat and so we can see From chat also, we can see some questions. Yeah, questions in the chat in the, at the moment. Yeah, there is. Good luck, Nikalis. In the chat, she had asked the topic sentence application in all the grant proposal. Should it be highlighted at the top of the grant background or abstract? So topic is sentences. So in some of the proposals, they have the guidelines like where you have to write. First, you have to write the topic sentence and then you have to write about the background or abstract about the proposal. So it depends on their format of different grants. They have different guidelines. So you have to follow them, their guidelines. 
Now, Mr. Eto Isium has raised her, his hand. You can ask a question. Uh, thank you very much. Please, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. You can proceed. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my question is in line with the proposal outline. The outline, which begins with the title and the background of the information and all that. But I came across an outline that is expected one to provide input and resources as part of the proposal. The outline is also expecting output and deliverable as part of the outline, expected outcomes and dissemination and sustainability plan. So I was, look, I was thinking that as part of the course, wouldn't it be good enough to have different formats and subheadings for us to be familiar with them and then master all those areas? So that when it comes to sustainability plan, for instance, we'll be in a better position to be able to write it and write it well. That is my question. Yes, sir. Anyone wish to answer this goodies? So we will discuss about the different uh, format template, but uh, it depends on the grant uh, providing authority because they sometimes they have their own guidelines. They have they provide their own format. So most of the time we have to follow their format. But while writing the grant proposal, we have to keep in mind that when our ideas are innovative, only then we can get selected for the grant. So we have to keep in mind how we can make our proposal more effective. We have to keep in mind how we can portray our potentials, our expertise through the proposals. So they wish to see how innovative your ideas are so, so that they can select the best one which will have the better output. That's why they ask for what is your probable output, what are your uh, methodology or research uh, design that you wish to apply in the research. Now, Mr. Aka Alex has raised his hand. Hello, everybody. Uh, am I clear? Yes, yes, audible. Yeah, I, I have. Two questions um, from Uganda, Kampala, okay. East Africa. Now I, I have a concern. One, I have already completed my bachelor. I'm out of school. But now the issue of collaboration with the institution, how am I going to do about this? How am I going to work on it? Secondly, there is issue when, they, when you are writing, they said confidential data. What are these confidential data, which is sometimes they say you have to provide in case uh, they, they, they request? What are these confidential data? And then another one is about, uh, uh, especially when you look at uh, the proposal hotline. I totally agree with it. It is, it, is, it is actually very good to follow it. And to some extent, where you are, you are, you are, you are not given the format, I think the one which we have in the in 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 in, in, in the training is, is so good and it helps us to uh, to to come up with a with a good proposal. Thank you for now. Anyone wish to answer his queries? Um okay, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Let me come in quickly here. So so the first part um uh, that uh, our colleague from Ghana asked about including other aspect of grant writing in it. I am uh, I am Bernard Apia, originally from Ghana, based in the U.S. now. So I think that funding agencies have their requirements, and sometimes they call it differently. So some of the concepts that one may learn in a, a particular grant proposal may be applicable in others, although it will not be clearly indicated as such. The case of sustainability plan, for example, some grant will say capacity building. 
And they, we have talked about uh, CV before. Some also will say biosketch. So it is a good idea to, for one to get exposed to uh, different things so that depending on, on the funder, what they are asking for, you will be able to provide that. Because for example, in grants that will not require you, require that you provide your biosketch like that of the United States National Institute of Health, some may ask you about what are your qualifications? And, and you have to summarize it in a manner that will fit that. It's similar to uh, what a different funder may, may, may ask. So sometimes it's difficult for one course to really capture all that the others may want you to have. But the goal is that once you get exposed to some of these, you may be able to apply them in different aspects. And then for someone who had completed school long ago and want to collaborate, it is something that obviously it is important. If, if you have completed uh, school long ago, the chances are higher that if you are working, you may be having some research work with others. If you are not working at all, and you have also completed school for, uh, for a long time, obviously it may suggest that you may not be very active as a researcher. And so if it's a research grant, you may want to partner with somebody if you have the expertise in it. You don't go in more as a principal investigator, especially if it doesn't fit your the role very well. So one way is to look for people who may have expertise in your area, who are doing the work around it, and then see the extent to which you can work with them. Thank you so much. Very good. Yeah. Sometimes in the research team, there are a need for some surveyors, research assistant. So even if you have low quality qualifications like bachelor level only, then even that qualification is enough for joining the team of the researchers. Now, Mr. If I'm Mr. coming Mr. here. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm Aneo from Nigeria. Um, just to answer, uh, also to contribute to what others have said, is that um, he can as well look for a mentor in his field. He can look for a mentor in his field and um, probably um, contact the person. And um, and I'm sure if the, if the men mentor sees his willingness, then we'll be able to absorb him into the team and um, also see that as a, um, as a building up process which anyone will be glad or any researcher will be glad to, to contribute into a, an early career person. So that I also advise to him, he should look for a mentor. Or probably from his institution, I'm sure he has a supervisor. He can as well approach the supervisor. And, and I, I'm sure the, the supervisor will be glad to assist. Thank you. Very good. No, Mr. Job Metenge is there. I would like, sorry, I would like to add something also. Okay. Uh, also, there are some, I'm not sure what is your field exactly, but there are some organizations, which is uh, nonprofit organizations, which are mainly targeted or they're really uh, working on collaborative work. And one of them is GRC, and you can check it. it uh, their goal is to help researchers by giving or training them and give them workshop uh, there in the medical field. So you can check them, then you can take the workshop and then you come to apply it in their research. And they are a lot of, they have a lot of research. So you can be a part by applying in the firm that also could uh, contribute and like uh, help you. And there is a part he mentioned regarding confidential data uh, in addition to what uh, Bernard say. A confidential data and graph proposal, it includes any sensitive information that you cannot like publicly disclose it. So it can be, for example, your personal contact, financial contact or financial information and other information that uh, they ask about you, they ask you about it, but you, you don't like, for example, to want to share it in public. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for adding on that. Job Matangi, please ask your query. Hello, thank you for allowing me to ask. I'm learning a lot. I am in 
the field rather I'm practicing in tech I'm in a startup we are looking to build a prototype so when I found when I learned about this grant I know there's a grant for the grant you get as companies when you go to launch loan tanks and the rest I thought this is also a venture to come it could this could also be a venture to fund but I see I might be at the point I need to expose the details of the prototype for me to get the grant in the proposals so how do I protect my PI rights with and not lose the grant thank you anyone wish to answer his queries so when you go for the industrial grants or funding then you have to show them the prototype and if you wish to protect your prototype then you have to first if you have innovative ideas then get it protected under the trademark or copyright or if there will be patent option in your country then you will be rest assured that your ideas won't be stolen but you have to approach different different companies which are related to your field only then they will be they will be interested to fund you because when they see that there is opportunity for growth when you collaborate with them they see that your prototype is going to make some difference in the society and it can make a big change in the industry then surely they will try to fund you and they will try to collaborate with you so it all depends on how and where you are going to knock the door because you have to search the right option hope i am clear now thank you very much mr nida gori has raised please ask your queries hello uh, can you hear me yes sir okay uh, i'm nida gori from pakistan as i have uh, introduced myself in my last session that i am working in non profit hospital uh, uh, so uh, my uh, i am interested in doing a research in a children uh, the disease is uh, i am noticing is common but uh, the people and the population is not aware but the signs and symptoms are very common so i am doing that research so i want fund for this so can you please uh, let me know uh, which website i have to search for this type of grant and uh, this is my first question i have another question first uh, if you want to answer this question so i can uh, ask second one question anyone wish to answer her queries your research area is medical science so probably the medical institutions will be there the council of medical institution will be there who who is the highest authority in the medical research so you have to approach them because most of the research in medical field is very a protected one because everyone is not allowed to do any type of research they first they have to get the permission from the highest authority then they can get the funding funding can be taken from big hospitals it can be done by the manufacturing uh, medicine manufacturers can also fund you there can can be big ngos who support uh, welfare of the society they can also fund you so you can look after different opportunities in your country because it will most of the funding you will get from your country only but if you wish to c4 international then you can visit w the who website also if there is some type of funding for medical they will try to provide you hope i am clear and uh, if you have next question you can ask yeah yeah my next question is that as i have uh, uh, you reviewed the assignment uh, so in that uh, i have seen that we have to make budget proof so yes. i am not as i have not 
uh, written any grant, so I'm not aware how to make budget. So can you please explain, do we need to make budget too, or we have to work only on uh, RFP? Yeah. Budgets are the estimated expenses that you have to, it will have uh, four or five major headings, like one will be a research team, one will be the equipment or materials that you need for research, one will be the, the contingency funds, like uh, traveling allowance, uh, your stationery, and so these are the three, four uh, subheads where you have to split your expenses, expected as expenses. If you wish to get some expensive equipment, then you have to mention that we need to acquire this expense. So budget is very important because only then the funder will know how much they can fund, whether it is within their limit to fund you or not, whether your uh, proposal is good enough to get the uh, asked or estimated budget. Thank you. Uh, as I have uh, uh, read the, all the material, which was very helpful for me to design our request for proposal or application, but uh, there was no any instruction to make a budget. So I will uh, share, sorry for interrupting you. I will share in the chat the link, so it will help you to uh, structure your budget. I hope it helped. Thank I you so it. much. Thank, thank you so much. Now, Mr. Ronaldis has raised his hand. Please ask your queries. Mr. Ronald. I think he is not online. Then Mr. Brian Obita can ask. He needs, his... he needs to unmute himself. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Yes, uh, I'm, I'm Brian from Kenya. Uh, I just wanted to inquire uh, if you are applying for a grant and your institution maybe has some bureaucracy issue when it comes to raising the uh, when it comes to raising the fund. So I understand that you are supposed to apply for the fund, and the funder is going to channel that amount into the school into the in institution account. So when the institution has an issue, uh, like how. In that case, what are you supposed to do? Because sometimes it's beyond you. You want to continue, the, maybe you want to do your project, but then you're not able to access the fund from the institution. Because it's a problem here in Kenya. So I don't know, are you supposed to provide another account where you can be, I mean, where the money can be, I mean, I mean where the money can be in, into, or what are you supposed to do in such a case? Thank you. you. Research grants are provided in the institutional account for the safety and security of the fund. Because if they provide fund in the personal account, then you might misuse the account. That's why there is a check and balance if mechanism is provided. Institutions are provided because institutions is responsible, but they will release the fund for your research. And you have to write, there might be some part-wise payment can be done. So there will be different criteria of the different funds. Some funders provide entire amount to your institutions and your institution will release as in when you require according to budget and expenses. You have to provide them proper expense details, what expenses you are going to incur, what are the, so make a proper budget, different stages of the uh, expenses. So initial expense, then you can get it. You can write an application to your institution, they will surely release because it is not money is not given for them, it is given for the research. They will surely release the fund. Okay, uh, another question. I, I just want to appreciate uh I want to appreciate the team for having organized the I mean this session. It was it is really educative. But then I wanted also to request if you can have in the future a session for the statement of intent. Uh, for those of us maybe who uh, I mean, for those of us who will be maybe looking for scholarship opportunity, actually it's really hard sometimes to start to develop one. So I think if you can have a similar one on the statement of intent, it can be really of help to most of us. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, Mr. Mega Ayub has raised his hand. He can ask. Oh, Dr. Sharma, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope you can hear me very well that same. Yes, sir. 
Uh, Dr. Sharma, what, what we've, we are facing, I can generalize it because it has been researched that uh, higher institutions of learning, I'm a Yuban, I'm from Uganda, and probably it cuts across to uh, probably East African universities. And uh, it was stated, attested in, one, in two studies that I read that uh, higher institutions of learning, uh, probably the students have deficiency in uh, research development and also applications. And there is less engagement of, uh, of uh, student supervisor engagement, leading to, um, uh, you know, leaving the students unable to actually even develop a simple proposal for research grant uh, application. So my inquiry to you, facilitator, is uh, I feel like, uh, is, do, you, do you see it ideal that uh, uh, a private entity is developed and this private entity probably is uh is you know empowered with researchers that go to these universities and empower these students uh teach them how research is developed authentically and also as research users they also guide the students on how research is being used elsewhere probably like here in the grant application do you see that feasible that universities can probably buy it to have, because even another study shows that facilitators are also, supervisors are also deficient. They are incompetent in, in, in proposal development. So do you see a private entity uh, helping out universities? And the next question is, do grant funders also fund such private entities that up to, that their aim is uplifting research uh, regionally? Those are my yeah, very good idea. But I will suggest so I will encourage you to take a lead and you can start your own venture as a PEB. You can start as an NGO, you can start as a private agency, or you can have a center of excellence in our department where you are teaching or you are researching. So a government entity can also work if you in in case of India, there are different universities. So in different universities there are center of excellence one particular center of excellence will be working in disaster management one particular center of excellence will work in urban planning so so different universities have different center of excellence so that type of innovation you can take up in your country and you can motivate your universities to initiate such type of innovative centers so that they can help others they can be a tor torch bearer to others and others can learn and also you can start your own ventures. So it, this is a very good business idea to, that you can monetize your ideas. But doctors, doctors, yeah, yeah, uh, 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 doctor, the, the universities currently, they aren't actually utilizing those that have the knowledge that probably have been exposed to this uh, kind of research and also the use of research. And they are still, the people they employed currently are those persons that actually went through the same system that uh, that wasn't helping in in research development? So, um, I'm I'm seeing like, can't you do, do you really think we need a private entity could work that maybe collaborates with the university and it, it uplifts the students yes, than yes. joining the university as 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 a lecturer? Yes, yes, sure. The, this can be. Does it happen? Yes, yes, it happens because in India also there will be private research entity or agencies where universities invite them for teaching the students. Like if they have innovated some ideas, then they will come in the department and then 50 or 100 students will gather those who are interested in particular thing, then they will deliver. The university will pay them a particular amount for such type of a workshop or seminars that so that type of initiative must welcome and this type of initiative can be promoted by the university themselves because they have to take the lead only because private agencies they will approach but they have to get some fund because they have to meet the daily needs that's why they, so it is a win-win situation for both entities government agencies as well as private entity thank you now mr yeah. Vincent Kamwat is raised hands. Please ask your question. 
Vincent. Hello, Dr. Sharma. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Um, I must appreciate the, the course. It is uh, very enlightening. But I have a concern regarding the proposal writing. Now, according to the template we are given, um, there is a, a section on who will be involved. Mention the names of investigators or implementers and then the profile of beneficiaries. Now, we are conducting a research project. I don't know who could the beneficiaries be in this case. Thank you, that is my concern. Anyone wish to answer? Pardon? No, no, you, I'm asking other facilitator if they can answer, otherwise I will answer. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, uh, the beneficiary, if you look at the call for your proposal, there is a particular thing over there. We talk about the impact. So in your proposal, it's not just written for written sake. It actually has a purpose as an output, what you want to achieve. So those people that will be concerned will benefit from your research. They are the beneficiaries. Take for instance, you want to have um, an improved varieties who are the people that will benefit from it? For example, say the farmers will benefit from it because they're going to be high yield or persistent varieties. Then the seed, the seed makers, and um, a lot of people. So that's just an example of people that will benefit from your research because your research is not just in isolation. It's not just being done experimentally. That is an intention. That is a purpose of that research. The output you want to get from it, and then with your output. How beneficial will it be to some people? So that is what he's talking about there. Yeah, very good. Because all our research are intended to enhance the quality of life of the society. If our research is not going to help our society, then it won't be funded. It won't be supported by any institution. So you always have to look into some benefit. There can be two categories of the beneficiary. One will be the primary beneficiary who will be directly benefited by your project or there can be secondary beneficiaries who will be get benefit as overall development will take place when your project is successful. Thank you. Now we have a question from... Thank you. Take some questions from the chat. I may just give a summary of the question and maybe answer it immediately. Someone, Dr. Hitu, asked about gender balance in a team, that they want to write a project and they are all females. You know, sometimes it depends on the proposals for the call. There are proposals we have for the, strictly for only females. But if it's not strictly for only females, I believe there is a need at least to find a male so that there will be need to balance the uh, the people, the investigators that are involved. Then another person, Christian, I think from Gulu, asks, uh, is it a usual thing that funders get back to you with comments if you didn't make it? Sometimes you don't get a um, comment from funders. Sometimes you get. It depends on the people that are in charge and what they want. Some may have the time to respond to you. Some may not uh, have. Then another person asks, can someone from example the ones you see in the university, the ones you see in the university, their PIs are always professors so that they can be able to win that grant. But if it depends on the kind of grant you are seeking for, you know there are grants for non-governmental organization NGOs, and they may not have a professor but they have people who are there. Is the person from that NGO or, or is the owner of the NGO that knows what is involved, can even involve a junior, a, a junior researcher from the university. So in that aspect of grants, the PI can be an LA career or even just from the non-academic team. Now, someone asks, must a PI be, a, a, has a PhD? Like I said earlier, it depends on the grant. If it's university-based grants, or most from the a specialization of a field, 
most of the PIs must have a PhD and most of them must be professors. Thank you. I think the summary of some questions that have been asked. Thank, thank you for your insightful words. Could we take other questions like Rishka Oshelu has raised her hand. You can ask your questions. Uh, hello. Uh, I do not want to ask a question. I would like to respond to something that somebody asked. His name is Brian Obita. He was asking about a statement of intent when applying for scholarships. I would like to tell him that I am experienced in that area and he can reach out to me uh, via the inbox on WhatsApp uh, so that I can help him with that uh, writing. Yes, thank you. Very good, thank you. Now, Kondwani Chimutu has raised his hand or her hand. Please ask a question. Kondwani Chimutu. Yes, hello. Thank you for, uh, for the presentation and the time. My question uh, was uh, to do with uh, the proposal writing in terms of uh, making your proposal, uh, uh, giving credibility to your proposal, so to speak. Uh, in your own experience, uh, how many or what's, what's the best uh, range of people that should be in a project in terms of when writing the proposal and the like so that... Uh, you can have, uh, you can assign roles which can make uh, that process uh, as smooth as possible. I hope that was clear. Yes, anyone wish to respond? Yeah, I mean, um, thank you so much. Uh, this is Bernard Apia. Uh, from, my, from my experience, I've had a, a proposal, I'm currently actually, you know, resubmitting um rejected because they had many people <laughs> now the problem with having many people is you may find people have similar roles and indicating that this person is doing a and the other person is doing b is a big problem now in terms of number there is no magic number i mean in my case for example there were 13 co-investigators of course this was like a, a, a 2.5 million uh, dollar grant and so you would expect that, of course, you need more team members. But I think there is a need to be very, very careful in terms of who you bring on board. Because sometimes, if you are lucky to even get a grant, some of the people on their team may not do anything. You know, so um, be very careful and make sure the people who are there really have the qualifications and the expertise that will benefit the project. Um, some proposals may indicate a particular number. For example, I mean, welcome trust in some applications, they will say that you can have uh, a maximum of eight co-applicants, but you can include as many co-collaborators as you want. Because of the level of um, role and expertise within uh, this kind of application, because they expect a co-applicant for welcome trust, for example, in, that, in those proposals, they expect you to commit at least 20% of your effort, okay? Some, some funding agencies will require you that you indicate that. So if somebody can bring in some expertise, but it's not at the level of a co-applicant, then you can put that person to say a collaborator or a consultant. So I would say that uh, look for the numbers that some funders may provide, but if there is no number that they are specifying, then just make sure that the people who can actually make your application strong are there and stop, I mean, consider not uh, duplicating effort, bringing people with similar expertise. And the problem sometimes is people want to bring their friends and colleagues and, you know, like uh, everybody wants to be on it, you know? So <laughs> that's a, a major issue. Sometimes you may have to disappoint some colleagues and say, hey, you know, for the purpose of this application, I think, you know, uh, I can't have all of you, but in case we get it, don't worry. You know, we'll see how we can at some point, you know, collaborate. But for this particular application, I think that the number that we have is just enough. And so in future, I could consider you do it in a more polite way 
Because if you want to satisfy them, you may not satisfy the reviewers and the founder, and you may end up not getting it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I would like to add on. Uh, there is a rule of management. There is command and control rule where a person can have a direct authority over maximum of seven person. So if you had, have a good control over your teammate, then don't increase it more than seven person. Some of it, it also depends on the how much amount of the funding that you are getting. So sometime two, three person, at least they require because one person can make on judgments, but when there is a team, only then proper judgment can be done, which will be in the profit of the society. And always try to define the role of the persons who are you keeping in your team. Most of the time, some of the big tasks that you think they can be outsourced, they can be done through the students. You can employ your student for doing the survey. You don't need the team of the hundred for doing the survey. Your core team can be only five persons, but you can, for extensive work, you can hire external agency, you can hire students for doing such surveys or some sample collections. Hope today's session was very delightful for everyone. If you have any questions, then please ask now. Otherwise, our time is almost over. We will be able now. Raised hand, please ask. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to ask, uh, we are talking about research grant, how to write a research and to do the research. Now, it is, it is a problem, uh, maybe let's say in Kenya here, in that it's really hard to get a site. If you, are, like, if you want to do a research and you want to do maybe article reviews, most articles are purchased, but then maybe you're not in a position to purchase or the institution is not, uh, is not in collaboration with that site. So can we have a site maybe shared such that if you are doing, uh, 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 in that if you are to do a research and you want to do literature review, or even download some articles that are of essence to you in your research, uh, maybe can we have those lists shared or any link that can uh, be shared so that uh, it, it be of help to us? Most of the journals which are beyond the payment wall, they also have their options that authors can share their published work in private community. So you can directly contact the author and ask him to send a copy, then surely they will help you. There are some websites like ResearchGate where scholars upload their own published work because in most of the paid journal or open access journals which ask there is some embargo period. So in that also author is empowered to share his published article within a limited community. So if you ask, approach them, they will surely help you. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful session. If anyone wish to add on, please add on. Any other facilitator? Test fee is right in the program. Testify or okay. you can ask your question. You are muted. Testify, also, can you mute, unmute yourself? Wahilo Dauda, you can also ask because you had raised your hand earlier. You can ask. Yeah, good afternoon from my end. Um, this is Swaliho from Sierra Leone, West Africa. Um, maybe the question might not be directly related to proposal writing, but it has to do with something on um research. Um, first of all, um, I'm a graduate in public health for over five years now. I've been working with the Ministry of Health precisely as public health superintendent. But over the years, I've developed a lot of interest in research writing, and I've been fortunate to be part of auto -Aid, um research uh, um, um, writing session for the past two years. So my question now is, um, 
I'm intending to start my postgraduate, possibly this academic year here in Sierra Leone. Um, but I, like I said earlier, I really, really have great, great interest in research. Um, but being that I've not, I mean, completed or I've not, um, I do not, I do not have a master's or a postgraduate um qualification. How should how how should I you know um get um a possible mentor to really take me through um uh, in any of health related or precisely public health related research field? Thank you. Anyone wish to add on or apply? Thank you for the question. You can you can meet your on that. Can, I, can, you? can you hear me? You can meet your undergraduate supervisor or your postgraduate supervisor to help you. You can look around within your university, lecturers in your area, they can help you to be a mentor. Equally, you can apply in auto aid. Auto aid used to have um, mentors for people, and it is free. You go go through the website. You see where mentors are. You reach through them. They can help you to go to see a mentor as well. You can Google articles online, and you see a, an article that you're interested in, and the person that wrote it might be is a lecturer. You can write to him, maybe in ResearchGate or Academia. You said, I enjoyed your article. This is why I enjoy it. Please, can you be a mentor to me so that you guide me and so that I will follow up. You guide me in what I want to do. There are people who are out there. Um, I'm in early career and I see articles. I read them. I write to them. I want them to mentor me in this area and this area. And they agree. So I believe it's possible too with you. Thank you. Mr. Testify Gabriel, please ask your queries. Uh, sorry, but I just want to uh, announce something. Uh, okay. Pay in the chat, please, because Tapita is sharing important links. And the last link that the first, uh, my colleague mentioned, you can check it, who asked about the mentor. So, please ask your queries, Testify. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, this is Tesfai from uh, Magala University, Ethiopia. Uh, I'm very uh, grateful for the session. And uh, my question is, uh, I tried to write grant proposal with my colleagues here in the College of Health Science, Magala University. However, most of the time, uh, receiving feedback for rejected application is, is very difficult. and uh, could there be any mechanism for receiving feedback by, from the grantors or from the reviewers? Uh, another point which I would like to raise in the lesson two, uh, in the first section, there, there are uh, some uh, guides and there is something which, is, which, is, uh, which says like drawing attention with your opening. And the other point is uh, begin your... Uh, 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 begin your paragraph with a uh, uh, topic sentence. I, I found it like, you know, a bit uh, uh, confusing because, uh, for instance, if, I'm, if I want to talk about tuberculosis and my topic could be improving the diagnosis and case detection of TB, whereas uh, I should begin with something that draws an attention like the prevalence of TB among adults and children is increasing from XX percent in 2015 to XX percent in 2021. So how could we reconcile such, uh, such uh, statements like drawing attention with an opening as well as starting with our topic? So this is uh, just for clarification. Another point which I would like to raise is some country as well as especially in Ethiopia from the conflict affected setting in the northern Ethiopia Tigray. Uh, sometimes, you know, grant proposals should should uh, support for the conflict affected settings. In fact, there are uh, many grant proposals uh, 
calls uh, request for proposals. However, I, I didn't really found it helpful for uh, supporting the uh, proposals like for conflict affected setting. If you have any uh, any idea or any guidance in order to write grant proposals from conflict affected settings. Thank you so much. Anyone wish to? Sorry. Topic sentences cannot always be related to your topic. So different, there might be different paragraphs. So, but always try to write a paragraph we should focus on a particular theme like if you want to highlight the problems then make it contrasting so that your problem is big only then they will think that you are going to do a good research so always highlight the problems that your research is going to solve how innovative your ideas are to solve it how waste your team is in the compared to others so when you make a proposal they always think, take about what is your intent, what is your team members, what are their qualifications, how innovative your ideas are, how effective you can do it, complete it. So they, when they, you get the rejections, it is not because it, it, you, your proposal is not good because they think take into account everything. So you have to focus always while writing the grant proposal, don't write on your own try to discuss with your team they will give you insights and then incorporate it only then it can be better uh, be, because it is my personal experience that when we prepare some grants then we discuss with our team only when it is a good teamwork then it will be a good proposal also thank you and uh, now mr theophile is waiting for his please ask your queries Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Theophile. I'm from Rwanda. Currently, I stay in China for my MPH uh, and the last year. So I would like to ask uh, if there is, is there any difference between literature review of research proposal and uh, one of grant proposal? That is my question. Thank you. Um. <laughs> Let me quickly come in here. I know there isn't much time here. I think in a grant proposal, you are looking to get money. So the convey like uh, you you have to make your literature review more persuasive. You know, like more aligned to the fact that uh, you know they should. The reason why you know you need to be uh, given the uh, the funding. Of course, both will have to be true, you have to provide facts. It's not like because uh, you are convincing them to give the money to you, you're gonna say things that are too outrageous or something like that, no. I think uh, with a grant proposal writing, it's more about persuasive writing. You know how marketers, when they are selling something, even if, even if you don't have money, uh, you feel like, uh, I have to go and borrow and get something, right? You know, in, the, in, in terms of uh, you know, writing for publication, you are you are writing it to also give a picture of why your your study is necessary, your, how your study is contributing to uh, filling a particular gap or aspect of a gap in a proposal. So, uh, sorry, in a research area, both both definitely seem to be almost the same, but with the grant writing, the persuasion tend to be more higher. Uh, than that of the typical literature review for a manuscript or a journal paper. Thank you. Very good. Very Ronald. Uh, now, Mr. Venavola, Ronald is has raised his hand. You can ask your queries. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, what I was trying to ask was uh, I believe at that point I, uh, I, I, I want to, I'm at the level of an early career researcher and uh, I like the issue that you, you are passionate about or the field you are passionate in the, in the, in the sector. 
and like again like correspondence to the grant opportunities, grant opportunities are available what should i do if grant opportunities doesn't favor or align well with the research topic that i want to like reveal or unconceal to the world anyone wish to answer Yep. When you try to get the grants, write for the grant, they always try to look their, what are their requirement, what are they looking for, and they, when you try to fill in the gap that they are wishing to get it, then only you will be able to get the grant. Most often, it, your budget will also define if they are the funding agency is not very big, they cannot fund a large amount, then your grant proposal should be also uh, aligned with their uh, financial capacity, like they will fund only particular up to few thousand dollars. So you you cannot make a proposal of millions of dollars, so it will automatically get rejected. It won't fill in, fit into their... Now, Vincent, can what, if you have any queries, Please ask. Vincent, can what? Or it is getting me. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Are you getting yeah. me? Yes, yes. Oh yes, oh yes. Now I have a concern. Um I've been chatting with my colleagues. And then the concern is um, there are some calls for proposal by donors. Now, people respond by sending uh, proposals, but then they don't give people money, but they want to benefit from ideas of others. I don't know how we can avoid that and how such a problem can be can be resolved. And I don't know whether it is true, first of all. Thank you. While applying for any grant proposal, always look for their background, whether the agency is authentic, whether it has a background of providing grants or not, because mm -hmm. there might be some fake websites where they will float some proposals but actually they don't provide any type of fundings. So avoid such type of fraud, fraudulent websites. So always take, check the track record, whether they have, if you can, they, if they provide some information of the earlier grants or proposals or projects that they have done, then try to contact the persons who have done, mm -hmm. then you will be able to get any insight. If sure. the real person is done, then surely that agency will be good. Otherwise some, person might dupe you. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. I just, uh, in uh, addition to that, <laughs> okay, go sorry, we're not you can go. Oh, no, please go ahead. Okay, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. In addition to that, like the official websites, you will find like the funders, we have no, their no, no, no. vision, their mission, their previous funding, their guidelines, like it's really clear and there are origin and trustworthy. So there are many, many scammers around. So you have to take care of these things by looking at the original and ask people like trustworthy people, the people in the field, specifically like the staff members, the people who have experience uh, before in grant writing and these things really help. Don't go just directly because people, uh, usually those people, they play in the emotion of the people. They know how to target them. They know their behaviors. Yeah, thank you. And I just wanted to add that sometimes, even for the credible funders, yeah, I mean, they have guidelines for reviewers that reviewers cannot share those uh, ideas with other people and things like that. And so I, for example, as, an, uh, uh, as a reviewer myself, you know, I have read other people's proposals and things like that, that, you know, I know what they are doing, but I cannot use it or cannot share it with other people. But you know, humans are different. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, a reviewer, so usually they would try and indicate that, of course, they cannot 
guarantee. I mean, the funders will tell reviewers not to do certain things, but they can't guarantee that in actual fact it will not be shared. So it's a risk. Life is a risk. So if you are afraid to submit because maybe sometimes somebody may take the idea, you may end up not submitting it. But funding agencies have systems in place to yeah. ensure yeah. that people don't use it. But as you know, sometimes anything can happen. Yeah, thank you. Sure, yeah, thank you too. Always check the terms and conditions and uh, uh, privacy and confidentiality. Yeah. yeah. Itel Miwal Miwaba Jam is from Zambia. Please ask your queries. Itel. Itel, are you there? You need to Please unmute you. yourself. Please. Check some questions from the chat if some people have asked there. Uh, I'm trying to reply to them. Chidema asked about supervisors having passion for their students. If your supervisor doesn't have passion for you, you can shift a little bit by looking for another lecturer in your department who believes in you, who knows what you want, and who can equally take you to supervisor and align the relationship between both of you. Then someone asks um, if there is or if there are facilitators for undergraduates. I believe auto aid is there to help everyone depending on your level of education. So if you apply to auto aid uh, men mentorship, the facilitators, facilitators are there to help you. You can go to the discussion forum, ask your question. They are here to help you no matter your level. And we exchange ideas too. Thank you, Shama. Yeah. We should, uh, hope we should close the session because time is already over. We wish to, we try to reply all the queries. That's why we extended the time limit of the our session. So this was a wonderful session. Everyone participated very or in a very organized manner. Everyone responded, asked the good questions. Hope this type of session we can arrange for um, budget making in future because I think budget making is very important aspect of the proposal writing. We will discuss in our next session if possible. Thank you, thank you for participating and joining this session. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, this was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.